Hi, this is Darrell Webster with an exciting piece of news about the OneNote setup tool for teachers. It has moved out of beta and it has a new name now, the OneNote Class Notebook Creator. So I'm going to show you where to find it in the SharePoint store and how to install it. First off we're going to get into adding an app because it is an app from the SharePoint store. And we choose SharePoint store on the left hand side. Now rather than trying to search through all the different categories, use the search box, OneNote. And you'll see there are two tools offered, uh, the old or the beta version. Um, it's got five stars of course because it's done quite well. But we're now looking at installing the OneNote class notebook creator. You'll need two accounts to be able to do this. First of all you'll need the global admin account and you'll also need a Microsoft account to access the store. After we've installed the new app, the OneNote Class Notebook Creator, we'll uninstall the OneNote Setup Tool for Teachers. So just a bit about the app, it is essentially the same application, it's just that going forward all the updates and the development will be on this new Class Notebook Creator application. So if you still have the old one installed and you continue to use that, there will be a point where it will no longer do what it's supposed to do. So back to installing the, the app. We'll launch it, add it. Somewhere along the way here, we'll be asked to log in with a Microsoft account. Okay, so it's picked that up from me being logged into a Windows 8 machine. And I'll continue. And yes, I want to install that for all people in my organization. Returning to my SharePoint site. I create the trust relationship with the application and it's now installing. So after that's installed then we'll uninstall the OneNote setup tool for teachers and make sure that uh, the notebooks created in the future won't be uh, created with the wrong tool. So let's go ahead and uninstall it now click on the ellipsis button and the ellipsis button again to find the remove choice Yep. so now the old tool has been removed and this is a, a first-hand experience let's just click through and see how the new tool operates let's launch it so here we have the familiar screen where we can create a class notebook and add new students. I'm just um, interested to see whether it sees my existing notebooks. So we'll just click into here. No, we haven't got any created notebooks um, with this new tool. But just to set your mind at ease, the existing notebooks before we remove the old tool, uh, we'll just check to see where they are. They usually live in documents and in a folder within the documents library. So here's my courses and I still have my English, Maths and PE notebooks but it appears that the new tool doesn't see the old notebooks and um, therefore can't add new students or adjust the permissions on the notebooks. So this is why I highly recommend that you uninstall the old tool, install the new tool and um, going forward create your notebooks with that. Perhaps even consider recreating notebooks with the new tool if um, that's applicable or practical. So let's have a look at the creation process for the new tool. I expect it to be similar if not the same. Year 10 Science. Same sections that it's created. I'm not going to rename the sections. Just a note there that um, when you are renaming them, leave the underscore there because it'll keep the sections uh, to the top or to the front rather than sorting them in alphabetical order. Uh, we'll add a student, Jack Sparrow. Yep, same sections and we can add additional ones if we wish. And a view of what it looks like for a teacher and a student's notebook. Yep, so nothing's changed here so far. Create the tool. It's given us a lot more feedback now about what's happening within this process. Um, so working on setting your own permissions. We saw a few other oh, yeah, setting read permissions and I expect that um, 
There we go. It's created uh, one section for the students and um, the collaboration section and content section. And it's ready to connect to, so we'll see what happens when we connect to it. So let's launch the new notebook and see what happens. That's my old notebook created with the old tool. Let's just drop this ribbon out of the way. So it's connecting fine. I expect it will just lay out the same as it was in the, the beta tool. Yep, so it's got the same welcome page couple of other OneNote basic pages. Now collaboration space. Ooh, some new information. Giving a bit more explanation about what this collaboration space is about. And because I've got the authors turned on, I can see who's authored it. Microsoft, of course. <laughs> and what else have we got there? Better collaborate with the documentation. Better than being on a file share. Keeping your class on the same page, great. So what other tips have we got in some other sections? Our content library. Place for materials such as readings and worksheets. Yep. Teacher's material. Uh, typical scenario. It's like the teacher's filing cabinet. Great. Okay. And does the student get anything interesting or new? Just the usual sections that you might have created and, and added to at the creation of the notebook. So now that the notebook's created, I want to go and check where these notebooks have been stored within SharePoint. So first of all, logged in as myself as a global admin, I can see that some of the recent items that are being created, uh, there's the app itself, there's a, a document library set aside for EDU OneNote app, and then my course list of the uh, notebook that I just created. So if we go into site contents uh, we should see there's the new app library and the new application. And opening up that library we see a familiar structure. We've got the courses. There's a new column there in this list called notebook type. So each of our courses are going to be created in there. So with each teacher that logs in and, and runs the tool, it'll create that folder based on the username. We've got our notebooks, and here's the column filled with notebook type. And I'll just have a quick look at what that column is. We'll look in our library settings. And down here, it seems to be just a single line of text. So it's not linking off to another list and making a lookup. It's just a a line of text to identify what type of notebook it is. Okay, so the other thing I want to have a look at is the student's view. So, you know, we've created this notebook and that's fine. Uh, it was relatively easy to find earlier because it was just in the documents library, the shared documents library, which is a default library for each team site. Um, now it seems to be creating this EDU OneNote app documents library. So how do we find that easily as a student? Let's have a look. I've logged in here as Jack Sparrow. He's on the team site. And okay, because it's in the recents menu, then that's fine. It, it is there. But uh, it would be a better place to put it as a permanent fixture on this quick launch or current navigation. So I've gone back to my admin login and I'm now going to rename the library to something more friendly. rather than the edu OneNote setup or OneNote app documents. Let's call it something more like classroom notebooks. And we'll display it on the quick launch. And one more thing we'll do. is we'll use edit links on the quick launch and move the document library up to there. So we go back over to our students login. We should see it there now. Do a refresh. Here we go, classroom notebooks. 
So that makes it easier for students to find. Now we click into our notebooks, open up our library. If you want to go one step further, of course, if there's a, a you know, limited number of notebooks that you're creating, you might want to put a link directly onto the quick launch to the, uh, the notebook rather than to the library where the notebooks are stored. Now there's one other thing that we want to check to see if uh, has been fixed in this um, general release. Um, the notebooks that are created by the tool, we want to see if a student can edit their own section while in OneNote online. Beta version, it was not possible, so um, I don't expect to be able to edit anything in the welcome page, but we'll just go to our collaboration space and as a student see if we can add anything to a page. Well we can't add a page it would seem. Can we add anything to the browser? No, not yet. Um, let's go to my page as a student and we don't seem to be able to add anything yet. So okay, that's um, apparently a, something that's been fixed in the next release. I know that the OneNote team are aware of it and they're working on it, but it still doesn't seem to be fixed in this uh, general release yet. So waiting patiently, but of course if you're a student and you do have the OneNote app um, application on your desktop, or maybe uh, you're browsing to this from a tablet, then you'll be able to open it up in OneNote on your device and work locally with a rich experience as a client. However, we still want to see this working within the browser for students, so it shouldn't be too far off. So if we go back to our site as the admin, a further thing that you'll want to do is, I would say, remove the link to the default notebook that's created with the team site template. Save some confusion because we're now getting a couple of notebooks in different areas that they are available. And uh, we'll just, uh, as a way of um, checking to see what the experience is like now, We'll go back in and look at our existing notebooks, which is the new one that we've created. And we'll add a new student. First of all, we'll view the notebooks. So yeah, that's good. It's looking in the new location. And now that explains why we couldn't see the notebooks from the old location. Um, I don't expect that if you move the notebooks to the new library, you would um, carry those permissions over. So. Again, uh, you might have to just sit with the, the notebooks that you've created with the beta tool and just um, you know continue to use them but plan to perhaps recreate them uh, in the following term or following semester and, um, and continue to use the new tool. Uh, now let's see if we add new students to an existing notebook. Should be a very similar experience to... Okay. That's fine. Update, getting all the updates of what's happening in the process. And it's a much faster process now too. It used to be two or three minutes to add um, you know, a student to the notebook. And that's fine. But it looks like the tool op operates as expected. Move on back to the creator. That should take us back to the home page with the three choices. Yeah, that's the one. And the back button, of course, will take us to the home page. So there you have it. Um, it has moved out of beta. Um, and in summary, it's now called the OneNote Class Notebook Creator. Um, the notebooks have been moved to a different location now. There is a, a new document library called the um, EDU OneNote app documents and I've changed the link to to be called the classroom notebooks and moved it further up into the quick launch into the current navigation so it's easier for our students to find uh, once we go into that notebook um, documentation library edu OneNote documentation library probably want to change that to enlist settings give it a friendly name you'll see all the courses of uh, student of um, teachers that have run the tool and created their various notebooks and um, as a student's view, um, they can open up the notebook and um, at the moment still they, they're unable to edit the notebook in the browser, but they can open it up in OneNote on their iPads and 
on their desktops and in the uh, Windows Store app. So that was a quick review. Hopefully that will help you get up to speed with the new tool and we're looking forward to seeing more developments. So thanks for watching.